I'm auto specialist Tom Volk for the Seattle International Auto Show. The Palisade has always been good. For 2023, it gets a major refresh. You may have noticed the new front end. The instrument panel and steering wheel get a redo too. And the entirely new XRT model adds some rugged design cues here, here, and here. Still, it's not overly outdoorsy looking. The neighbors won't think you serve s'mores for dessert every night. This appearance package adds $2,200 to the price of the SEL model. The MSRP of this all-wheel drive XRT model, including destination and optional hyper white paint is, anyone? $44,060. That's what we in the biz call a pretty good deal. Now, you should still cross shop. Some of the competitors include Explorer, Ascent, Pilot, Pathfinder, Highlander, and of course, the Kia Telluride. If you're not aware, the two share an architecture and powertrain. The Hyundai remains more urbane looking after the refresh, looking like it's off to Nordstrom, not REI. Here's what gets the family to their next adventure. Palisade's 3.8 liter V6 that runs the Atkinson cycle cranks out 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. That's all the same for 2023. The cluster is new though. The same 8-speed automatic transmission is back for cog swaps. Manual control is done here. The Kia X models are strictly all-wheel drive. Hyundai lets you slice $1,900 off the price if you don't need it. The center differential can be locked, an advantage many competitors don't offer. All-wheel drive models get a new tow mode that changes transmission mapping. It tugs 5,000 pounds max. The more budget-oriented XRT doesn't offer a head-up display, if you're wondering. It doesn't matter what trim level you buy with the Palisade, all the engines are the same. So you're not gonna go any faster with the Fancy Pants models. Zero to 60 happens in about seven seconds, not bad. It moves very nicely off the line. And because it has a V6, there's a little bit of growl. It sounds good. Oftentimes, buyers go with a third row simply for those just-in-case scenarios. Yes, Palisade is on the larger side, but still well over a foot shorter than a Chevy Tahoe, eight inches less than Traverse or Buick Enclave. And a reminder, measure your garage before committing. Palisade has that elevated ride height that everybody wants from their SUVs, and visibility is really good in this vehicle. Also, this is large, yes, but spatially, it doesn't feel really big. It doesn't feel like you're driving a school bus. So for everyday driving, things like parking lots and garages become less of a white knuckle affair. It corners confidently for a vehicle in this class. Don't hold your breath for an end performance model. And there's no extra ground clearance, no extreme off-roading family memories, just the light stuff. The ride quality is a good blend of comfort and control. The Palisade doesn't have those fancy adaptive dampers, at least not in this model. Um, really, you don't need it. You start off with a real good setup and it just works. The EPA rated fuel economy average is 21 miles per gallon on standard grade gas for the all wheel drive model, kind of mid pack in class. And I'm seeing that. The efficiency champ is Toyota Highlander Hybrid at 35 miles per gallon. And yes, that's all wheel drive. Almost all vehicles have automatic engine stop start systems. The Palisade is no different. This one is really good. I mean, really good, buttery smooth. In fact, I almost forgot to talk about it. It's that good. Startup, again, almost seamless. Raising kids can be a contact sport. Both appearance and durability are important. Like many in this class, there are loads of places to stash life's necessities away. Nothing creative when it comes to storage, but there's a place for just about anything. If not using the adjustable cup holders, all of the mess can be out of sight and out of mind. 
Everything's easy to control with an interface menu that's laid out well. The new screen stays familiar. Touch response is good. Redundant hard buttons mean less searching through menus for what you want on a daily basis. Row 2 gets all the essentials to make family life easier, including lessons in negotiation since you can add or subtract legroom for those in back. All but the base SE get ultrasonic rear occupant alert to signal if you've left your kids or pets in the vehicle. There's a separate climate zone, lots of places to stash things too. I like where the USB ports are located, they're all the new Type C now. Getting into the way back is super simple. Even a three-year-old can figure this out, and when they do, they won't stop. Parents, you know what I'm talking about. I have to say, this space is pretty competitive in class. I'm five foot nine. I've got that much headroom, which is pretty good. Yeah, my knees are up high and thigh support is non-existent, but that's every third row in the segments. There's 18 cubic feet of storage with all seats filled. That would be five carry-on suitcases, actually pretty good in class. And that's without taking the load floor out, good for keeping things out of sight. And yes, there is a spare tire. Those seem to be going out of style. More expensive models get powered seat backs, an advantage for petite drivers when raising them. You're looking at nearly 46 cubes here. And even at this price, there's no need to walk around to drop row two expanding hauling space to over 86 cubic feet. That is a lot of room. Whether it's more of a base model like the XRT or the luxurious calligraphy version, the Hyundai Palisade is one of those vehicles that seems to be just right for families. Drop by your local Hyundai dealership for a closer look. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Volk.